Hi, this is Miss Lady Petal again. I just want to thank everybody for all the really beautiful comments that they left on my first introduction video. And I can say I was really touched. And thank you for all the subscriptions. Um, it just makes me realise that I've made the right choice in sharing my art world with everyone online. And I, it just gives me a lot of pleasure to know that other people were enjoying it along with me. So I am doing a video today on letter journaling. And I'm just really excited about this. It's my new favorite thing. I have lots of favorite things all the time. So you'll get used to that in my videos. But um, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, so letter journals, I've got three on the go at the moment. I've got one going internationally at the moment. I've got two going locally, one interstate and one the next suburb on. And I've got all these requests for more of them because people are really excited about the fact that it's not a massive project, that they have time to do it, the relatively low cost of posting it back to each other. And they can do it in their own time. So there's heaps of benefits to doing this. Why do I want to embark on doing like a little mini letter journal? For me, it's about the collaboration. I just love the thought that I'm going to have a, an original pieces of artwork contributed by people from all over the world sitting in my art studio. And they did it willingly and I didn't have to buy it. And we all joined in together to create something beautiful. That's what's so exciting about this project. I'm collaborating with people that I may never even meet. I would love to travel overseas and see some of my beautiful crazy island friends one day, but that may never happen either. So this is one way that we can write things to each other that are permanent, that we can then display and share with people. And I'll be so excited in the future to do a flip through because I'm going to collaborate and make all of my letter journals that I get back and I'm going to put them all into one journal book. And that'll be a book where people can look through and have a look at art that's been done by heaps of different people. I love the concept. I've seen it a few different times for different types of projects online. And that's my motivation for doing this now. I'm doing a step through step video. And that means that you'll be able to pause in between each segment. There'll generally be a question. So, you know, what paper do I use and how do I bind this journal? That kind of thing. Um, and then there'll be some photos along the way. So enjoy. What size envelope do I use? Okay, for the purposes of this tutorial, I use an envelope that is 22 centimetres wide and 10.9 centimetres deep. In Australia, this is a standard B5 envelope and it's pretty plain. It's pretty thin, not meant to be used many times. This is the letter journal that I'll be showing you about today and I'll be working with. This letter journal fits exactly into the B5 envelope. So the dimensions of the letter journal therefore have to be 21.5 centimetres and 10.5 centimetres so that the journal easily fits. You can even go a little bit less to allow for width. In this particular journal, I have four sheets of paper folded. They're sewn in the middle. I'll show you to sew. I'll show you how to sew the the signatures in a minute. But that gives you 16 pages to play with in a letter journal. What sort of paper do I use? Okay, so in this letter journal, I use a very high quality photocopier paper. 
I think this one's actually a recycled paper. This has come out of a journal that I was binding. I've already got all the holes in there for the signatures. So for the purpose of the, of the tutorial today, I'm not going to cut it down because all I have to do is basically trim this edge off and I do that with a guillotine that I have. So what sort of paper? Look, I've seen other people use watercolour paper, which is thicker. So you've got to be aware that if you're going to fit it in this standard size envelope, that you'll need to use thinner paper. If you use thicker paper, you're going to have to go up to a larger envelope, which is going to cost you more in postage. And the weight will be heavier, particularly at the end of this project. So the postage costs will most likely increase the more times you post it, the more weight there is in a larger package. Whereas from what I can tell based on my experiences so far, in Australia, this particular letter journal is only going to cost me 60 cents each time, a normal postage stamp. It's thin enough to still go through the post office box slip. And when I posted one this exact size overseas, um, it co only cost me $2.60 to post it to the United States. So it was the cheapest overseas cost that I could possibly get, so, which was makes this exercise very economical when posting this around the world, which is what I'm currently doing with at least one of my letter journals. Step three. How do I bind the journal? Okay, well, for the purposes of our exercise today, the first thing you do is you fold all of your pages in half and then you use something like a bone folder to make sure that you score down the edges to get those folds really nice and sharp. Then you put your signature pages together and the holes that I've got here are one inch are one inch apart. I'll be starting on the outside in the middle. Actually I'll start from the the one just up from the middle so that my end. And today instead of binding cotton I'm just going to use a thin satin ribbon. There's lots of different binding methods used. I just use a simple, normal binding sewing technique. Then I know that the journal won't fall apart, that it can stand up to the rigours of being posted numerous times and being worked on, and it ends up being strong. My end goal with these projects as well is to actually bind them into a proper journal by the time I'm finished. And what that means is that all of my signatures are pre-done. And all I have to do is actually sew them into the binding. I always do a double knot when I'm using things like ribbon. Even then you can see this is just that little bit loose. And there we're done. They're bound. And this ribbon can get painted over. So, binding done. Okay. What sort of mediums do I use or materials or tools do I use in these journals? So I'll just open this up. Okay, so you want to use things that don't thicken the paper up too much. And so I use 
ephemera. I'm actually, I found this in a, a book and it just kind of fell out. You can see the spine's a bit yucky. But I'm going to use this in another journal because it's fold out and I think, oh, that would be awesome. Um, but I, I mean, I did my little journal girl, my little pretty girl. She was done on ephemera. So you can use ephemera. You can draw on it, do your pictures on it. Adds extra interest and texture. I've got a thing for that at the moment. Scraps of paper. So I've got these odd scraps of paper. Um, you can add them to them, stick them on, use them as a background, gesso over them, stencil, do whatever you want. I am particularly partial to monoprints. So this is just the beginning of a monoprint that I'm doing. I've got to add an, another couple of layers. But I particularly use... Um, some of my mono prints on the back of this one um, and it just thickened the page up a little bit so that the front and the back covers were just that little bit thicker um, I've used colored paper on the front here it was like from a magazine binder that I was covering and I had some off cuts and so you can see some of the finer detail down the bottom but I've basically washed and painted and stenciled and written and glued over it this was my um, scratch page from the previous page, so you can see the opposite prints from the back of the stencils and the splatter stencil I'd used from Tim Holtz here. Just pressed them onto the back and then used some ink. So I use a lot of inks. You can use sprays. Make sure that when you're using sprays that everything's dry before you post it. Sometimes I get so eager to do things I don't go anywhere. I make a big mess. <laughs> um, you can use washi tape. So I've got all different types of washi tape. And this page has got my own handmade washi tape. But washi tape's fabulous because it's, you know, it's so thin. I've used some gelatos. So you could use gelatos, water pencils, intense pencils, Copic markers. I've got some Copic. My girl was done in Copics. Um, there's some pit markers here. So if you're using gel mediums over your pages to seal them, you can work in pit markers to smudge into your ink so that it doesn't bleed. Stamps. So I use all different types of things. Little stencils. I use some all sorts of things. And quite often, like I'm saying, stick your mono prints on. But the journal I just sent to the United States, I actually mono printed straight onto the pages. And it was really awesome because you could just line the page up and then print. And then line another page up and use the other part of the jelly plate to print. And I was really excited by that. <clears throat> you got through your backgrounds really, really fast. And sometimes you might be, um, you might be really, um, you know, pressed for time. You know, stuff might be coming up in your life and you've got to send it off and your deadline's coming and you think, oh, I've got to hurry up and do that. But another thing you can do, like magazines, I don't really buy magazines at all, but I see a lot of the most awesome journal pages with magazines in them. You can put photos in them if you like, of bits and pieces. I just think anything and everything, as long as it's not really over-the-top bumpy, tags, die cuts, you know, you can use embossing powders. There's heaps of things that you can do. So what are the rules of letter journals? I decided that I would come up with a set of rules because if you're dealing with other people, then you need to be able to be all on the same page when you're approaching a product, uh, a project together. So number one, no lumpy bumpy. That's to keep postage costs down. And I guess, look, when you get that finished journal back and you then want to make it lumpy bumpy and you then want to add extra elements in, do it at that point, right at that very end point. I'm going to leave these the way they are because the purpose of them is um, to be able to have an affordable way to collaborate with other people that don't live nearby to you. And to have a blessing that way. Two, be prepared to have your work covered up. So 
when I have organised some um, little journal swaps, um, I say this in all seriousness, you know, if I have this pretty girl and somebody wants to cover her up, then they cover her up. That's the rule. We can't be too precious about our work, particularly, I mean, I've made something here that I expect to be covered up at some point. I mean, if they don't even like the saying and they want to write something else, cover that up. So that's my second rule. Have Because only with that can you have complete freedom for everyone to be as um, artistic as they want to be. Send your letter off once a month. Now, that's particularly for international. However, I'm sending this particular journal to someone in the next suburb. So she may send it back to me in two weeks, but she might send it back to me in a month. Um, we only have local postage, so it's only going to cost us 60 cents a pop to send it, so it's not going to be a big deal. But if I, but the one that I've just sent to the United States, it hasn't arrived yet. I know that because I'm chatting to the, to the ladies in the letter journal group. And um, that means that, you know, it could take 10 days to get there and then you've got to send it off within a month on the same day we set a day of the month that we would send it off. And so, you know, that that's so that everybody sends it off at the same time. And then we get an idea of um, when the, how long the postage system takes as well. So, and it still gives us maybe a week or two to be able to create in that diary. I mean, they're not huge, great big journals and you can do a lot. I mean, I, I remember one girl said she just did all the backgrounds in her journal in one night. She was monoprinting and she was so happy with the work and then realised that we had, you know, we we might have wanted to do a journal, you know, a background, in which case she said, well, cover it up. <laughs> so, so that's the way um, that we do that. And I'll go straight into the next one. Um, how many people can do this? I'm in a group of three and three groups of two at the moment and it's just interesting the group of three we're all doing our own journal so we all have one and we're sending it around in a round robin and then with um, this particular journal I'm going to send it back and forth and because the lady I'm doing it with this is really new to art journaling and she wants me to teach her the basics I'm going to let her keep this particular one so as a blessing to her but another one I'm doing I'm swapping back and forth as well so I get to keep one and the other person gets to keep one So, look, there's anything and everything in letter journals. You can test yourself. It's like I, I see online all the time on YouTube, a lot of people have these challenges where they can only do a journal page with paint. So if they want to paint someone, they can't use pencils to draw it or rubbers or anything or markers to mark out the features. They just use paint or they're only allowed to use three colours and they have to use those three colours. I mean, this is the same sort of thing. It's just limiting, you're just limited by the size and the type of paper and the cost involved in sending it around. So it's the same sort of challenge, but I like the fact that other people add to it and that's the real joy of it for me. So look out for my next journal, um, my next video. And uh, I have now three pages of planned videos. Thank you everyone who's giving me suggestions and asking me to do all sorts of videos. So this is number one and um, we'll keep them going. Keep all the questions going. Keep everything going. I love it. It's exciting. Thanks.